Tony, what has been the recovery like for the team following Sunday's win over Spain? Well, uh, we are in a training tournament mode and recovery strategies is key. When it's a lot of games in short, day, short time, uh, we need to maximize the recovery. So it's been all the recovery strategies you can imagine. Uh, hopefully we'll see that on the pitch tomorrow that we have recovered well. But it is a challenge with the third game in such a short period. Speaking of the third game in a short period, how's the team looking ahead of the match in terms of player availability? Um, again, training tournament mode in a World Cup. We wouldn't reveal anything in terms of player availability. What I can say is that I will get some answers tonight after this training uh, and then I'll work from that in tomorrow's game. What about Alana Kennedy and Hayley Rezzo? Has there been any update on those two players specifically? There have been some updates and will be more tonight and uh, that's why I keep it close to my chest because this is the World Cup rehearsal and we wouldn't reveal anything in, in terms of giving anything away to the opponents. How are you approaching this match in terms of player selection and potential group game rotations? Well, it's all about what I said before. We, every game we step in and play, it's about getting the best plan over 90 minutes. So best possible starting 11 for the game, best possible finishing 11. We've seen in this tournament so far that game changes has been massive uh, off the bench. It's a massive part of who we are. Um, if you look at the last six consecutive wins that we have, the game changes have been a massive impact and a key reasons why we've been performing as well as we have. So we plan for the best 90 minute uh, game we, or lineup we can have. Heading to Newcastle, a place the Matildas are very much familiar with. Um, how are both Emily Van Egmond and Claire Wheeler tracking? Will Newcastle natives see them tomorrow night? Well, first of all, we love playing up there. The support's been amazing. Last time I was there, it was, you know, massive, you know, support and the environment was amazing. So that fuels us to play the pressing game that we want to play and the high-octane attacking game that we want to play. Both Evie and Wheeler have been good in training. And like I said before, we need every single player, whether they start or come off the bench. But I can't make any promises to anyone who's going to play. And especially, I don't want to reveal anything to the opponent. Let's turn to Jamaica. What is the focus for you and the team of this match? Well, first of all, we, we go to ourselves. What are we about and what, what, what do we do when we do it well? And there's three things that really is in the core and the essence of our DNA. It's our pressing game. It's our pace, meaning not just running, but with the ball, how fast we can play our attacking game now. And then the other one is set plays, uh, which we've shown again now scoring two goals in the last game of set plays and the game before set play goals as well. So those are the three main things that we focus on. Uh, but then obviously we need to put those three key ingredients onto an opponent and see what they look like. And the one thing that we looked at when it comes to Jamaica is that they have, are very, very good on the one we ones both duels defensively and attacking. And they have world-class pace in the transition game to hurt us in behind. When we played them in 2019, for example, that's exactly how they scored a goal. And we have the biggest respect to this opposition. When we played them in 19 in the World Cup, it was 2-1 in the 70th minute. It's easy to look at the final score, but it was 2-1 in the 70th minute. So this is going to be a tight game and we need to be focused from the first to the last minute. You've spoken about replicating the group stage of the World Cup. In this scenario, the group is almost assured. So how do you manage this match, tournament manage this match? Well, first of all, it's definitely not assured. Um, you know, we look at the, when you go into the last group stage game, you need to know what circumstances you go into. We obviously want to win the group. If we tie and win, we win the group. But if we lose by one goal, Spain has to be Czech with three goals. And we know that Spain can do that, even though Czech Republic is a very well-organized team defensively. So this is about making sure we perform at top level and not start thinking ahead. Training like in a World Cup, I want 100% focus on this game from the first minute to the last. Tony, I know you don't like to think ahead, but news did drop this morning about Australia playing England in April. Um, what were the main factors in scheduling those European champions? Well, it's part of our bigger plan from day one when I came on board. Make sure we play more European opposition because the stats and the history have proven that we have struggled against European oppositions in tournaments. The other one is playing top-ranked nations because, again, the history has proven that we have struggled against top-ranked oppositions in tournament. So the more type of games we can get like that, the better it is. Once again, I think the Federation has been amazing in supporting us and scheduling. It's a lot of background work to get this going and you need to schedule very, very far ahead. So it's just been planning in the background way back. We're talking two years back in terms of when should it be Europe, when do we go on, on home soil, who's available for each window, when you see a draw, what kind of opponent do you want to play. And then there's a massive amount of hours behind the scenes. And I'm very, very thankful for all the job that the Federation have done to support us in that scheduling. 
speaking of top nations, that's now eight out of the top ten nations Australia would have faced. Um, what will you be looking to learn from that fixture less than two months out from the World Cup? Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. Eight out of ten top-ranked opponents in the last two years, it's amazing. But then also do England, who is the European champions, and um, maybe right now one of the best teams in the world, if not the best team in the world in terms of how they perform. So that's going to be a really, really good test for us to challenge us to see where we're at in April and see what we need to keep working on for the World Cup. And finally, Tony, what will it mean overall to meet those objectives you articulated early in this camp? And how would you describe the application of your team to that objective? Well, we said we're going to go into it. We haven't competed for a long time, right? We played a lot of friendlies uh, because we have World Cup on home soil. We haven't had the qualifications. Uh, we needed to really look at this as tournament training and tournament mode and be on a mission uh, and really practice that because we want to create winning habits and winning culture. Uh, and that's the mindset. And we had a meeting this morning and say, you know what, we had a recovery day, but now it's back to business uh, and replicate kind of the mindset that we need to have going into the World Cup. So even though it's a friendly tournament, for us, it's a very, very important opportunity to together with the fans in the stadium and together with everyone connect and lift the trophy and feel that winning feeling and what it feels to win. Uh, so that's definitely the main objective tomorrow. But in order to do that, we need to focus on the performance. Thanks for your time. Thank you.